Hello, everyone. This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Proudly, we hail. Now, another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Paul Lucas, and presented transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bancroft. Our play is entitled The Last Chance, The Time Today. The scene, somewhere behind the Iron Curtain. The story, the tale of treachery and a few surprises. After this important message, our first act curtain will rise. The woman in the Air Force is a woman who has found that it's smart to serve her country. She wears the trim WAF uniform and she has a good future and a good outfit. If you're between 18 and 34, Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and ask for details. Be smart. Do it now. And now with your star Paul Lucas in the role of Stefan Donner, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Last Chance. with the slightest amount of musical appreciation ranks Stefan Donner as one of the greatest composers and piano virtuosos of his time. Audiences everywhere loved his music and applauded his playing, but as an individual, they did not like him at all. Cold, arrogant, disdainful, Stefan Donner appeared to look up to no man and down on most. A temperamental genius who considered himself above the piddling bickerings of a world on the brink of an explosion. He took no sides and welcomed the performance in Moscow as much as one in Washington, adapting his work to the dictates of his listeners. As a result, Stefan Donner traveled east and west with more immunity than a top diplomat, and few knew or dreamed the true meaning that lay behind his movements. But, uh, but I, uh, I beg pardon, sir, you said... Uh, Another one drink? Yes, sir. A messenger boy brought it up. It was left at the desk a few minutes ago. Hmm. Now, let's have a look. This is your last chance. Either we do business, or I take mine to others who will be more willing to listen. The car will be waiting at the same place at 8 o'clock. Your men ring is to come with you. Same as before, no signature. Looks nasty, sir. Yes, very. Well, whoever this fellow is, I don't think he's bluffing. I, I suppose we took an earlier plane. I thought of that, but what would we gain? We'd get away safely, all right, but if this anonymous letter writer knows what he intimates, the next time we came east would be the last. But how could he know, sir? It's a possibility we've always faced. Uh, would it be the secret police blokes here trying to lead us into a trap? Ah, no, I don't think so. Why should they? If they suspected, they would come and get us, and that's all there would be to it. No, this looks like blackmail, pure and simple. It would seem that we have no alternative but to play along with him. We've had our ultimatum. Uh, what about the new score, sir? Don't we have to take it out on the morning plane? That's what was planned, of course. I've just finished it. I am sure Richards would like it. Does this sound like armament figures? <laughs> well, no matter. That's not the problem right now. Uh, what will you do with it when we go out, sir? Leave it right here with the rest of the music ring. You don't expect me to take it along with us, do you? Uh, no, no, sir. <laughs> oh, now, come, ring. That's not like you. You are the optimist. Let's just put our brains together and figure out the best way to walk into a lion's den and pull his tail. <laughs> like the car there, sir. All right. Be ready to improvise, Ring. We don't want any unfinished symphonies. Please to get in. Uh, 
curtains on the windows and curtain between front and back. Whoever our host is, he's shy about our knowing where he lives. Pleased to get out. Well, how charming. Looks like a hunting lodge in the middle of nowhere. Recognize any landmarks, Rink? Ah, gentlemen, this is an honor. Come in, come in. And Max, close the door. I can feel the chill from here. Afraid of light? Sir? Not at all, Herr Donner. The light from the fire is quite sufficient for our needs. Max, take their coats. <laughs> Max, hey? And who was that lovely fellow who brought us here? Oh, Lodi. He won't be joining us till later. He's running an edit. Well, now we know your friend. Who are you? <laughs> Come over by the fire. It's much more comfortable. You know, I've been a great admirer of yours for some time, both on and off the concert stage. Sit there, if you like. Some brandy, perhaps? What do you say we dispense with the politeness and get to the point? <laughs> I'm sorry I had to be so abrupt in my methods. I don't like being abrupt, but uh, my name is... Uh, Ziegler, does it mean anything to you? Not a thing. Does it mean anything to you, Ring? Can't say it does, sir. Well, if you're telling the truth, my ego is hurt, but uh, my head feels a bit more secure. Now, Mr. Ziegler, I am in no mood to listen to a commentary on the state of your ego or your head. You have brought us here for a purpose. I want to know what that purpose is. <laughs> you're wonderful, Donna. Superb. All right. You think you play a dangerous game. Well, my game is twice as dangerous as yours. I, now, uh, this is making no sense to me at all. I play a dangerous game? I play the piano, sir, and that is all. And if I can prove otherwise? I would be most interested to see such proof. I'm sure you would. I'll convince you without it. No matter how I became interested in you, suffice it to say that I did. And for a number of months now, I've been watching your movements. You speak in riddles, sir. Yeah, you play poker well, but unfortunately, I hold all the cards. I am Ziegler. And like you, or unlike you, rather, I am the true neutral. Only I don't play the piano. I play both ends against the middle. I like two things, excitement and money. And I'm getting my share of both. I buy on one side and I sell on the other, or vice versa. And sometimes I sell the same information twice. Huh? <laughs> Quite a game, eh? That's all. That's how I know all about you. Uh, uh, what's the use of trying to bluff? Mm, I see. I knew you would. Now, just like I knew you'd come here tonight. You still haven't convinced me that you, have con you can prove anything. Even if I couldn't, I could put you under such a cloud of suspicion that you'd become worthless. And? And sign your own death warrant. That's a well-signed document, my friend. But I do have proof. Question. How does Stefan Donner get his information to his Western employees? Answer. Any information passed on to Donner is transposed into a musical score, which sounds good both to those who listen to it as music and to those who hear it as a code. Ah, that startled you, huh? <laughs> Very ingenious idea. Very, and I congratulate you. And again, where is your proof? It should be here another half hour or so. Hmm, you don't say. That is, if it's still in your hotel room. That's the errand I send Lodi on, is to bring back any music that looks newly written. Does that convince you? What's your game, Ziegler? Ah. I can't break your code. Through various sources, I know your latest score is extremely valuable. When Lodi returns with it, I want you to translate it for me. I shall then sell it to various interested parties and probably back again to those from whom it was stolen. I shall also demand a sizable sum from your employers for your release. It's as simple as that. By tomorrow, I'll be in Zurich, ready to start negotiations. You know, Rink, it is an experience to be entertained by a madman. Oh, quite, sir. I might add, if you refuse to cooperate, there are ways to convince you. And how could you be sure that my translation would be correct? I know what the information concerns. My knowledge of the entire situation is vast. I'll know whether it's correct or not. It would seem you have us. What happens to us? In the meantime... Lodi and Max will keep you company and tend to your needs until the transactions are complete. I'll send word, and you'll be released. I must say you've thought of everything, Ziegler. He's a very clever fellow, Ring. He is indeed, sir. <laughs> Gentlemen, you flatter me. And incidentally, I'm sure you wouldn't be so rash as to try anything violent. If it becomes necessary, 
My faithful Max is very proficient with a burp gun. Well, it certainly seems to be taking your retriever quite some time. Oh, he'll be along any minute. Have no fear. Ah, we have planted the seed of doubt in the quagmire of Mr. Ziegler's mind. My dear Donna, plant all the seeds you like. They'll bear no fruit to help you. But Lodi is a long time at the fair, isn't he? Of course, you realize should anything happen to endanger me or my plans, I shall have to rid the world of one of its greatest musicians. That's something I should never forgive you for. <laughs> Donna, I realize you're not bluffing. What happened to Lodi? Don't tell me the shoe is on the other foot. I'm not joking, Donna. Either you tell me what you were hinting about a while ago, or I'll turn Max loose on you. <laughs> now, for a mastermind like yourself, I should think it would be obvious. I knew whoever you were, you might want to get into my hotel suite. I didn't think you'd know about the music, but still there was the possibility you'd be looking for that or something else. Before Rink and I left, we informed the hotel people that someone had been trying to get into our room. And I was most indignant. It would seem that it was successfully. Hmm, that startles you. Max, get outside and watch the road. If Lodi talked, you realize that if he did talk, you'll have cooked your own goose too. Now wait, Max, get the other car. Then come back here and help me. We'll be going back to the city. You, get over there and turn around, quickly. Stay seated, Donna. <laughs> A shame we had to put your man in the trunk, but somehow I think he'll be safer there. And now, what may I ask is the plan? <laughs> it's simple. You will take Max and I to your rooms. Three good friends. You can do your transposing there for us, and then we'll all be off to another quiet place I know. Don't you think that's a bit risky? If your man Lodi made such a disturbance, the police may be waiting to question me. Oh, have no fear. Max will do a bit of reconnoitering beforehand. If the police are there, we'll have to give up the idea of the music. Although I hate to. That would be a pity. If you do that, what is there left to sell? <laughs> Why, uh, the most valuable prize of all. You. I'll sell you to both sides. <laughs> Very neat touch. <laughs> Paul Lucas, starring in the role of Stefan Donner in the proudly we hail production, The Last Chance, will return in just a moment for the second act. Who's the smartest woman of the year? Why, the woman who puts on that new blue uniform of the United States Air Force. Smartly tailored, neatly groomed, she's being seen more and more around the nation these days. And she's smart in another way, too. She started a great career as a WAF one of the women in the Air Force working side by side with the men of the Air Force. She wears her Air Force blue proudly with a sense of personal accomplishment because she's doing a needed job. In administration, in radio as a technician or operator, in the medical service as a technician, or in hundreds of other interesting fields. More and more young women, 18 to 34, are finding out that the smart thing to do is to get the complete details at the nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Put on the smart blue uniform worn by the women in the Air Force. How about you? Can you qualify? You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of The Last Chance. All clear, Max? No fear of Lodi talking. He's dead. He made a run for it, and they shot him. Eh, uh, poor Lodi. Are the police still in there? It's hard to tell. I don't think we should risk it. When I want to know what you think, I'll ask you. If you go in there, you'll go without me. Oh, you lost your nerve, huh? I want to keep my head. If Donna here tried to betray us, he'd betray himself. He wouldn't want to do that? I don't know what he would want to do. If you want to go in with him, go ahead. I'll wait here in the car. Uh... I'm disappointed in you, Max. 
Don't blame me for your mistakes. Well, Donna, looks like you and I will have to go this alone. I admire your courage, not your intelligence. Suppose you get out. If you make a run for it, I'll not try to stop you. But remember, I have your man, Rink. Should you try to expose me to anyone who might be waiting, they'll be interested to hear what I have to say, too. So, uh, like two good friends, let us go in and have a look at your music. Get out. Now, don't start the engine until we return, huh? If we're not back in ten minutes, you know where to go, Max. Wait for me there. And uh, if you don't come? <laughs> then what you do is your own business. Are you Inspector Markov? Uh, correct, Herr Donner. They sat in the lobby that you were waiting to see me. What is this shooting business all about? Oh, uh, 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 this is Herr Gruber. He thinks he's a music critic. One of the best. They said a man was shot. Uh, yes, uh, you were right. Someone has been trying to get in here. Uh, we had a man waiting for this bandit. The bandit tried to resist and it was necessary to shoot him. Uh, now, have you any idea, Herr Donner, why anyone would want to break into your rooms? For money, perhaps? For my music? I don't know. Maybe for my music, hey, Gruber? <laughs> I hate to think of anyone dying for your music. I can think of nothing finer. <laughs> He's a very droll fellow, Inspector. He's always giving me bad reviews. Uh, I'm not much on music myself, uh, but my wife, uh, she, she likes her playing. Every time you give a concert here, she goes. Ah, your wife has far more taste than this pen pusher. He thinks my music decadent. It does not meet with his, uh... Look, I will let you be the judge. Here. Now, you know nothing about music, Inspector. Well, let me play my new piece for you. It's a polonaise. We'll see what you think of it. No, my friend here, he doesn't like this. It moves him not at all. <laughs> what do you think, Inspector? Mm, uh, it, it's very gay. <laughs> yes. But to Gruber, it must not be gay. Music must sound like tanks and guns and airplanes. Ah. Look at the look on his face, Inspector. I really don't know why I put up with him. My wife, oh, my wife, she would enjoy to hear this. Uh, she plays a bit herself. She does? All right, then. I like your wife. I think she's a lovely woman. Oh, you're joking, sir. Why, she's as big as... No a... matter, Inspector. She likes my music. Tonight, that's enough. You have done a good job, and I wish to repay you. Do you think your wife would like this composition? I like it? You, but I... You, you can't do that! Oh, I can't, Gruber, eh? Well, I certainly can, and I shall. I imagine she would like it autographed, too. Here, Gruber, give me your pen. But... Uh, Herr, Herr Donner, this is wonderful of you. I... I don't know what to say. Think nothing of it. What's your wife's first name? Uh, Alvina. Alvina. Ah, what a beautiful name. Isn't it, Gruber? But, but, but that's the only copy you have. But why should you care? You don't like it anyway. If it's the only copy, now, now don't, don't listen to him, Inspector. He's just jealous. He'd like me to give it to him. There. With kindest regards from one lover of fine music to another. Stefan Donner. Uh, how is that? That, oh, that? That's wonderful, Herr Donner. Oh, you don't know how, how much this will improve things with me. I, um, uh, she... Well, sometimes... Oh, well, you understand it, don't you? <laughs> of course I do. There you are, Inspector. No, wait! There is uh, something wrong here, Gruber? Well, speak up, man. What is it? We can't keep the Inspector here all night. Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> He's an odd fellow, isn't he? He seems to remind me of someone. Thank you again for all you've done, Inspector, and I'm sure there won't be any more trouble. They are all wrong about you, Herr Donner. They say that you don't like anybody. <laughs> now we know better, don't we? My best to your wife. Good night, sir. Good night, Herr Donner. I, I can't tell you how much of a pleasure it was. Call on me when I'm here any time, Inspector. 
<laughs> if, you, if you could only see your face. <laughs> you certainly have your nerve, Donna. I'll hand you that. Of course. <laughs> I realized you'd never give that fool your precious composition unless you either had another copy or know the score by memory. I assure you that's the only copy. And as for remembering how it goes, my memory is very poor. I think Max can refresh it for you. And before we leave, would you mind giving me back my pen? Oh, how careless of me. Your pen, of course. <laughs> I must admit it's stimulating dealing with you, Donna. I can see how you've managed to fool them all. Even you. You've outsmarted me twice this evening. I congratulate you. But I've still got you. And before I'm done, I'll have the information you so generously gave to that knuckle-headed policeman. <laughs> I have found it a tried but true axiom, Ziegler. Nothing is certain in this world but debts and taxes. Tell me, what other information are you take, uh, taking to sell in Zurich? Oh, things I've managed to pick up here and there. I should make quite a killing. One way or the other. Isn't this a cozy little nook? I don't like it as much as the lodge. Quiet and out of the way. All right, enough of this. Either you'll do as I want or Max here will get to work. I'll be no party to this. What do you take me for? I'm a musician. And I'll not be intimidated by you or anyone. Max, keep away from me. You picked the wrong man to do your dirty work. Get him. All right, particular. Max, run. Halt. Well, Inspector. It's a pleasure to see you again. You down there, did you get him? Yes, sir. He's dead, sir. Broke his neck, I think. Search him. What about the one there? Like a sieve, sir. A busy evening, Herr Donner. Thanks to you. My man, Rink, uh, is he... We had uh, him out of the trunk first. He, he seems to be all right. Uh, what about yourself? I am I'm afraid I feel a little faint. I am not used to this sort of thing. Feeling better, Rink? Uh, uh, much, thank you, sir. Rather difficult evening. We'd better get some sleep. I still don't quite understand how you managed it. <laughs> when I autographed the Polonaise for Markov, I didn't write the usual thing. I wrote, Gruber is a spy named Ziegler. Being kidnapped by him, wants me to carry stolen documents out of country. Follow car parked in front of hotel. My men in trunk of same. Please help us. <laughs> a stroke of genius, sir. But uh, how could you tell he'd read what you'd written? Well, I thought the chances were pretty good that he would. Markov is now my friend for life. The Polonaise should keep him out of Alvina's dog house for some time. <laughs> he was afraid I'd just given it to him to pass on the message. You saw how joyous he was when I told him he deserved it and anything else I could give him. Yes, but... He didn't make any other copies, and that... Uh... Ring, what do you think I'm playing? You mean you didn't give him the... What do you take me for? Of course not. But our poor friend Ziegler thought so. I, uh, don't suppose your story could be under any, uh, suspicion? Well, why should it be? <laughs> Ziegler was loaded with stolen documents. Markov likes me best, next to Joe. And his wife will probably rename all her children after me. Well, everything considered, sir, I'd say our luck's been right with us. Everything considered, Ring, I would agree. Ah, beautiful melody, don't you think? <laughs> From the pen of the master, sir. Paul Lucas will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment.
Registered nurses, the United States Air Force Medical Service offers you a great opportunity to serve your country and further your own career. Yes, you can become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances while you receive postgraduate training in anesthesia, operating room management and techniques, nursing administration, and other related fields. Nurses with special qualifications may train as flight nurses at the famous Air Force School of Aviation Medicine. For complete information, write to the Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. I repeat that, the Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. <laughs> program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Paul Lucas. The Last Chance was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Paul Lucas. We cordially invite you to join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled Border Incident. Until then, goodbye.